Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Ambernick RG 353V. I've been messing around with this handheld for the last few days and overall I really enjoy. I'm a huge fan of the Game Boy or kind of the DMG style handhelds. We've got a portrait layout here instead of a landscape layout. And the way they've set this up is actually really nice. The V model that we're going to be taking a look at in this video does have dual boot systems so we can go with Android or Linux from micro SD card. And if you were a fan of how the RG 353P performs then you're in luck because we've basically got the same system here in a different layout and yes some people love the verticals some people love the horizontal it's really up to you in the end to tell you the truth i've been using the android operating system here with this handheld more than linux and there's one important thing that you need to note now they're offering two different models of the rg353 we've got the v which we're going to be taking a look at in this video and they also offer a lower end vs and this part is really important when picking one of these we've got the rg353v and the RG 353 VS. As you can see, the VS is going to be the least expensive model, but there are some major differences here. The VS only supports a single operating system, so you're only going to get Linux here. It also has less RAM coming in with one gigabyte instead of two. You get a 16 gigabyte micro SD card, no touch screen, and no Android support. Now I will tell you, if you're just gaming in Linux, you're going to get the same performance here. That extra gig of RAM really isn't going to help out much with emulation when it comes to Linux. But if you want to run Android on a handheld like this, I would highly recommend picking up the V. And the price difference really isn't that much. You figured that the VS would be the higher end model, but nope, it's the V. And that's exactly what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. As you can see, Ambernick has done a great job with the layout here. They've got the good old D-pad that they use in a lot of their handhelds. Dual analog sticks. Now we've got switch style analog sticks here. They are a bit smaller and you know, you kind of expect this given that we have vertical layout here. They needed to save a little bit of space and they also wanted to keep them low as possible. So they're not sticking way out of this handheld. I mean, it's definitely a manageable setup. On the bottom here, we've got USB type C for charging the internal battery. Moving over to the right hand side, we've got our power button, reset button, and dual micro SD card slots. I'm really glad that they're still using this. Now, Android is actually installed on the internal storage that we have here, but having these dual cards does make it really easy to run a Linux operating system from one card and then store all of your games on the other. All we have over here on the left hand side is our volume rocker, and up top we've got a 3.5mm headphone jack, mini HDMI out, and another USB Type-C port. And finally, around back, we've got our triggers and our shoulder buttons. Now, when it comes to the specs, remember in this video, we're taking a look at the V model. There are different specs between the V and the VS. But for this one here, for the CPU, we've got the RK3566, a quad-core Cortex-A55 CPU running at up to 1.8 gigahertz. The GPU is the Mali G52 2EE. We also get 2 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. When it comes to storage, the V model does have 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage built in, plus we have those dual micro SD card slots. These will support up to 512 gigabyte cards. A 3.5 inch IPS touch display at 640 x 480, AC Wi Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, a 3200 mAh battery. And with this battery, they're claiming up to six hours of gameplay, and I could definitely see it with the brightness turned down. But in my testing, brightness at 100%, volume up to around 80, playing some of my favorite games in Linux and Android on and off, I'm getting about four hours and 40 minutes of gameplay out of this thing. So really, not that bad. And when it comes to the operating system, for the V model, we've got Android pre-installed, and we can run Linux from a micro SD card. First up, we're taking a look at Linux, and remember this is a dual boot system. Linux is running from a micro SD card. Now if we head over to settings, we do have dedicated settings for this device here. Lots of great stuff built into this operating system. And when it comes down to it, basically we've got emulation station with some standalone emulators and RetroArch cores. Now we've seen what kind of performance this CPU can put out. It's not like they've upgraded the clock speed on the GPU or the CPU. It's the RK3566. So when it comes down to it, I'd say up to low-end PSP games are really great on this. 
even N64 and Nintendo DS. I know when these new handhelds come out, a lot of people are hoping that we'll get better performance than the last handheld with the same exact CPU, but that's really not the case. I mean, over time, a little optimizations are had, which do help out with certain emulators for sure, but it's not like swapping out the CPU and GPU to a higher end unit. So yeah, this isn't going to run 3DS, it's not going to run PS2, it's not going to run GameCube games, and if there are some that run, it's going to be very few and far in between at a super low resolution with a lot of frame skip on. But there's still thousands and thousands of awesome retro games that this thing will play at full speed. Now, I do want to say that even though we've got a single speaker here, it actually sounds pretty good. I think it's positioned really well right in the middle there so your palms aren't going to cover it. And it gets really loud at full volume. And yeah, I really do like the button layout here. And yeah, I really do. And yeah, I really do like the button layout here. They kept it very traditional. I mean, there's really not much we could do here with the vertical button layout, but yeah, it works great like it is. And when it comes to this lower end stuff, you're going to have a great time with it. GBA on something like this runs flawlessly. I mean, we're getting really great performance. And having that 3.5 inch IPS display with these really bright colors is definitely a big plus. When it comes to DS emulation on this device, it runs really well, and it really comes down to using the Drastic emulator. If you're familiar with Drastic, you know it's been on the market for a while, and it works very, very well on even lower-end chipsets than we have in this thing. And out of the box, it's set up, so all we need to do is use the shoulder buttons around back to swap the screen layout. You can set it up for portrait, dual screen, you can set it up for vertical, or you could just go full screen with the main gaming screen, and it does work out really well. I mean, we've got plenty of power here, especially since we're using Drastic. But I think the limit here for the hardware is higher-end PSP games. Right now, I've got Tekken 5 running with the standalone version of PPSSPP in Linux. 1x resolution, OpenGL back in, this game runs really well, but it's an easier to emulate game. Now don't get me wrong, there are a ton of easy to emulate PSP games out there that'll work great on this, but even moving up to what I consider mid-range games, you will have to enable frame skip. Here's Tekken 6, no frame skip on, we're using the same exact settings that we were with Tekken 5. Just one more step up in the franchise. So with games like this, you will have to turn frame skip on to kind of get a nice steady frame rate out of it. And even then, it's frame skip. So it's going to half that frame rate. This should be running at 60. Now we're running at 30. And this may bug some people, but when it comes down to it, this is really what we got to do with the chipset they're using in this device. Alright, so now it's time to move over to Android, and both of these operating systems, Linux and Android, have their strengths and their weaknesses, and we'll go over that in a second. But when it comes to Android here, it's a custom version of Android 11. Unfortunately, we don't have access to Google Play. You could always sideload your favorite apps, but it does come pre-installed with basically everything you're going to need for retro gaming and game streaming. Remember, we've got AC Wi-Fi here, so streaming from your PC does work out really well. But keep in mind, if you're going to stream a newer AAA game, your aspect ratio is going to be very limited on this device. It'll give you black bars on the top and bottom, given that those are going to be running at 16 by 9 on a 4 by 3 aspect ratio display. But if you've got something like the Dolphin emulator set up on your PC, you could definitely stream it over here and it works out really well. Like I mentioned, both of these operating systems have their strengths and weaknesses. So uh, from my experience so far in Android, I've had much better performance with Dreamcast and N64 emulation. And when it comes to Nintendo DS, we've got access to a touch screen and it does work with the Drastic emulator. As for the lower end stuff, PC Engine, NES, SNES, even CPS 1, 2, and 3, Neo Geo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, those work great in both operating systems, but like when it comes to PSP, we saw performance wasn't great in Linux, and for some reason, what I've tested so far is even worse in Android. Now usually that's not the case. I usually get a little better performance out of Android with these lower end chips, but on this system here, I'm not getting that kind of performance. And even in Linux, it's not great for the higher end stuff. Down the road, this could definitely change, but if you end up buying one at the time of making this video, then you might end up swapping between the operating systems to play your favorite retro games, depending on the system you want to emulate. Recently, Amber Nick released their own front-end system for Android, and it's actually pre-installed here. If we swipe down from the top, we can access it. As you can see, we've got our systems listed here, we've got our games imported, we've got some artwork for those games, and we can go through and start up our favorite retro games directly from the front end. 
Now, a lot of this stuff is going to default to RetroArch, and when it comes to N64, you don't want to use RetroArch, at least at the time of making this video. So if you're getting bad performance by launching an N64 game through the front end, just go ahead and close it down and start the standalone app from the main menu. That's exactly what you need to use with this because you're going to get way better performance. And for N64, it does work out really well on this device in Android when you're using the correct app. I've not had much luck with RetroArch and the Moopin Core over there. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of configuration that we can do with it to get it to run really well. But my app of choice would be Moopin 64 Plus FZ. It does come pre-installed on this device in Android. And basically, all you need to do is start up your game. And a lot of this stuff works out really, really well. Even the harder to emulate games like Conker's Bad Fur Day is fully playable on this device. This handheld also offers some decent Dreamcast emulation. Now it's definitely not perfect and with some of the harder to emulate games you will experience some dips in the frame rate. But there's a lot of Dreamcast games you can have a great time playing on this device. And in my experience, I've had much better luck in Android with Dreamcast. By the way, this is using the Flycast Core in RetroArch. And I wanted to show you one more run in here. I haven't messed around with any of the configurations. This is Sonic Adventure 2, and it is using Frameskip. You'll see some dips every once in a while. Not horribly bad, but there are easier to emulate games that work really well. So overall, I have enjoyed using this device. I personally really love the DMG style or the old school Game Boy style, portrait style, vertical, whatever you want to call it. The D-pad is great, just like most of the other Ambernick devices. It does have a really nice screen going for it. It's got great battery life, up to six hours, depending on the brightness and what you're doing. I've been averaging around four and a half hours with it, with the brightness turned to 100% using Android. And mostly, I've been doing N64 and PS1 on this, so if you're doing lighter-end emulators with the brightness a little bit lower, you could definitely hit that six-hour mark that they advertise. But in the end, it's always up to you. There might be some people that love the design of this. There might be some people that hate the design. Some people are definitely going to be wishing for a little more power out of a handheld like this. But this is the CPU they chose to use in these newer devices. And we're getting the same performance as the RG353P. So, you know, if you're into the landscape style and you like the performance you saw out of this device, I would go with that one. But if you have to have a portrait style handheld, go with the V and not the VS because you do get that extra RAM and Android built in. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video. If there's anything else you want to see tested on this device, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one up, I will leave a few links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.